um, from 2011 to 2012. Uh, I was looking for ideas for um, a new series of articles for each single film. Um, and I was just looking for something that was very personal to me, something that wasn't just about what was going on now, but something that was very personal to me specifically. Um, came up with the idea of Reynolds Revisited. Reynolds Revisited is essentially me going back to watch, again, some of the, uh, the horror and sci-fi movies that I grew up watching as a kid and grew up renting from my local video store, just to kind of see how they held up. You know, now that I'm this sort of like smart-ass film blogger, um, do these films actually hold up or are they ridiculous or do I still get some sort of enjoyment out of them? Um, and I had just the most amazing time uh, covering these six specific films. Um, and I was having such an amazing time doing it that I just stopped because I realised that there was something more that I wanted to do with this. I didn't just want to fire this out onto each of the film on a sort of fortnightly basis. I wanted to do something more with it. Because uh, the thing that I found about it was I was enjoying looking back, looking at the films and going out and tracking them down on DVD or uh, tracking down digital copies of them or whatever. Um, but what was more interesting to me is all this stuff started to come back to me about uh, the video store that I used to grow visiting all the time and very little independent video store about the video world and I started to remember all the things I loved about it and the guy who ran the place and his relationship with me and how he sort of would allow me to watch certain things but wouldn't allow me to watch other things based purely on what he thought my mum and dad would allow me to watch. Um, so all this stuff started to come flooding back and I sort of thought, well, I think if I sort of covered a bunch more of these movies and sort of tapped in a little bit more to those memories, I might be able to sort of get a book out of it. I might, it might feel like there's more stuff to tap into. Um, so that's what I thought. I thought I'll part with it. But it can't be that hard. Um, and if nobody publishes it, it doesn't matter, it's still written. Um, so as the idea sort of started to take shape, um, the first thing I knew that I needed to do was find more movies. So I needed to sort of um, figure out and try and remember more of the films that I grew up with, um, try and sort of recall some of the scenes that have stuck in my, in my memory and stuff like that. Um, and I figured the best thing to do to make it a bit more of an authentic experience is to actually watch all the films in their original format on VHS. So um, not just the sort of sell-through versions that might have been available in, in HMV, but the actual big box rental versions that used to live on the shelves of the store themselves. So uh, I then had to go out and start finding the films. I had to start finding the actual tapes. Um, and I also had to get technology as well. I had to go out and find a decent old uh, 21 inch tube TV, because that's the kind I grew up with. Uh, I also had to find a VCR that was old enough that seemed authentic, but not old enough that it would just break. Um, that took me a while to learn that. I got a couple of decks of tube up tapes and all sorts of things. Um, and then from there I sort of thought, well what I would want to do with this is try and not only recreate the personal experience that I've had, but try and recreate that video store experience for the people who are going to read the book as well. So that was kind of the concept that I, that I had. Um, so I started basically, as I said, to sort of dig into my own past by going out and finding the right TV and the right VCR. Um, there were horror stories along the way about me spending something like, I think I found the perfect Bang & Olufsen TV and it cost me about a tenner. But because I decided to be cheap and sort of not pay 70 quid for, for it to be delivered by a reputable firm, um, I had it delivered by somebody else for like 20 quid and it came all smashed and I had to find another one. So there was all sorts of things that went wrong. Uh, all of them could go into book. Um, and then obviously started to find some of the tapes. So there were, there, were, there were movies that I remembered very vividly. There were movies that I kind of remembered seeing the colour for, but I didn't think I'd actually watch the movie. Uh, then there were films that I just sort of saw while I was hunting around with these things that I thought I fancy I'm going to get. Um, it doesn't always work out doing that with VHS because the covers were generally usually better than the films themselves. But, um, and then I decided to sort of try and find out a little bit more about the video shop itself. Uh, so just sort of walking around my local area, it's very easy to see where these video stores just don't exist anymore. Uh, Stain Off Video is one of the ones that I used to kind of visit fairly infrequently. Uh, now a hair salon and there hasn't been a video store probably for about 20 years. Uh, Casey Video is now a field, so it's gone completely. Um, video World is a derelict building. I think it was, a, it was an estate agent for about a decade or something, but again, that's not been a video store for probably about 20 odd years. Um, so, I knew that this stuff, I knew that this place existed in my mind, this, this very special place for me growing up. 
knew that I had it in my head, but I couldn't find any physical evidence of it existing. I kind of felt like I needed to see it, like I needed to, um, like I needed to sort of reconnect with it somewhere. Um, so I started fishing around in the, uh, the Great Manchester Archives, uh, got in touch with a couple of people, they took me to the photographic archives, and I managed to find this. Um, this was an absolute an absolute piece of gold to find. Um, this is the interior of the video store that I grew up with. This is a photograph that was taken in 1983 uh, by a professional photographer called Martin Parr. Uh, and he was commissioned by the uh, council to go out and capture uh, life in Manchester in 1983. So he did a series of photographs inside this, this video store. Uh, so I've seen all of those now, and they were amazing. Um, but this one, this was sort of, this was the first one that I discovered, and it was uh, it was amazing for a bunch of reasons. It was amazing just because seeing this for the first time in you know 20 odd years, seeing the wall panelling, seeing the colour of the shelves, the opening hours, the little sand, cardboard sandies that I remember and stuff like that. It genuinely was like being kicked in the stomach for seeing this for the first time. Um, and the other important thing as well is. You can only see it at a certain resolution here. It showed me all the videos that were on the shelf in 1983 of that store. So I was able to sort of pick out the ones that I remembered, contact other film fans and go, can you spot, can you pick out these movies? Can you tell me what these ones are? A slight reflection on the cover. And after a while, I had a list of like about 100 movies. So um, I was able to then start going, going sourcing them particular movies on tape in that format as well. Um, and then once I'd done that, I sort of ended up having a bit of a format of the book. Um, to sum up what the book is, I've, I've said what it is a million times to a million different people, but I think that kind of sums up roughly what it is. It is a memoir, but it's intended to celebrate lots of related to VHS movies and video, video store experience we gave out. Um, so that kind of sums up the book in a line. Uh, how it actually breaks down is an introduction, uh, then there's kind of a public history of VHS, because there is um, there is a, a very, um, a very sort of shameful time in, in British film history where uh, there was a lot of censorship going on, there was a lot of right wing politics that was going on, and it ended up, um, it ended up causing lots of um, moral panic in newspapers like the Daily Mail. Surprise, surprise. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a whole chunk of history there, so I just felt like felt like I had to touch on it, I had to refer to it at the very least. Um, then there's my more sort of personal history. Um, so about how I came to VHS and the store, um, and all about the guy who ran the store and stuff like that. Um, then there's a couple of chapters which are about getting the project actually started. So uh, about sort of discovering the shelves, the incident at the Great Manchester Archives, and, and sort of getting the project on the ground, having failed, failing the VHS and stuff like that. And then we get into sort of the main sort of body of the book, where it's sort of three sections. The first section is 20 films, all individually sort of looked at. Um, that are from the shelves of the store that are taken from the actual the, the picture that I found. Then there's 20 films that I remember from my childhood or I have specific, very personal memories of. And then there are just 20 films that are sort of, I've discovered along the way, sort of interesting films that I've been given or people have just sent me in the post, because that tends to happen now. People find me on Twitter and they just go, you got any rights? I've got, got a lot for the HS. Um, it's not always a good idea to accept them because you end up with multiple copies of like one in Titanic and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes they can turn into interesting. Um, and my the idea for how the book is actually going to look is basically like that. So two sort of pages about that shape. Um, I want people to sort of uh, see fully the, the, the video as it would appear on the shelf. I have rebuilt. Um, this is this sounds really cheap. But I have actually rebuilt a section of shelving as it would have appeared in that video. <laughs> um, just so that I can sort of make it feel like it's that video. Um, and then on this side, it'll just be a chapter, an individual chapter about the actual uh, filming question. So. And then when it came to publishing, um, I basically figured I had two options. I could just fire out a bunch of stuff to publishers or I could self publish. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just fire it out to some publishers, uh, see if they're interested, and then if they're not, I'll figure out how to self publish it. And if, if I end up giving it away, I'm not, not really that bothered. The point was to actually just do it. Um, but I got in touch with Unbound, who are actually a sort of weird third option. Um, Unbound are essentially a crowdfunding company. Uh, who deal specifically in books, so a lot like Kickstarter, but just for books. Um, and I took a meeting with them in Soho, um, 
and they took me out for a drink. And the guy, before I even opened my mouth, the guy I was speaking to sat down and he was just like, first of all, because I went down there thinking, I don't know if they want to publish my book, I don't know if they just want to talk to me or what. The guy sat down with me, he put a drink in front of me, he was like, right, before we do anything, I need to tell you about the video store I grew up in. And I just sat back and I thought, well, got this guy, like, this is a this is dumb, this is dumb. Uh, and it was, and at the end he said, we really want to publish your book, and that was just like, hearing somebody say that was just the most amazing thing. Um, thing is, it is like with Unbound at the moment, and it, it really depends on us getting published, like, it, sorry, it really depends on us getting funded, like, all sort of, uh, crowd, crowd funding, just sort of die out if it doesn't get there. So, um, so basically how, um, how uh, Unbound works is they set a target that covers the production of the book, uh, plus sort of profit for them, um, and sort of a number of copies that can go out to stores, uh, and then supporters can kind of go on and pledge what they want, um, and then once we get to 100%, it goes into publication, and everybody gets their book, and then some of the books go out into stores and stuff like that. Uh, if you support the book, you get your name in the back, you also get access to something that's called Rival uh, Now, this just made absolute sense to me, because all the while I've been doing writing this book, um, I've been running sort of the social media strands alongside it, so I've been putting out videos, I've been putting out podcasts, I've been talking to people, communicating with people through Twitter and Facebook groups and stuff like that. Um, and basically what Unbound do with their writers, their writers show is they say, all right, everybody who supports this book gets access to you personally, and they can go into your writer shed, you can speak to them directly, they can ask, ask questions of you and stuff like that, or you can just kind of share blogs with them, or podcasts, or videos, or, or whatever. And it felt like an extension of what I'd always been doing anyway, so it just sort of made sense. Um, so, one of the ways I've kind of always been promoting the book is through the podcast, so somebody very early on in the process said to me, um, this book that you're doing would make an ideal podcast. I hadn't done a podcast in a while, and I just thought, so I'll do it. Uh, it works out really well. It's been, I think, I've only done like 15 episodes, and those have been downloaded in total like 25 plus thousand times all over the world in like 43 different countries. People from all sorts of countries contacting me just to say, you know, I had that experience too, or I never had that experience, it's great to hear it, um, stuff like that. Um, I've also done a sort of feature length documentary episode about this guy, Cliff Twemlow, who uh, is a, Man a Mancunian filmmaker, a guy from Manchester who just went out and picked up some uh, VHS cameras and just went out and shot action films on Manchester, uh, around Manchester. Uh, some of them are awful, but some of them are just beautiful because they're so awful. Um, and I also got in touch with, um, through the podcast, with uh, a couple of people who were doing proper documentaries, uh, a guy called Josh Johnson who did Rewind This. Uh, I end up in the credits of the films, you know, as a special thanks and that. So again, sort of like little personal wins that have come from this whole project. Um, promoting it since it's kind of been live on, um, been live on um, Unbound as well. That's been another sort of that's been the thing that's kind of taken over now. So I don't any time for writing any more of the book or sort of doing different drafts. We've kind of been doing this sort of thing. So it's been covered in the Manchester Evening News a couple of times. It's the, the documentary episode of the podcast got in there. Uh, then when the book went live, they covered me in the evening news. A really embarrassing pose where I'm like, thank you, Mother. Um, and then that got picked up by a couple of other papers who ran the book. Um, it's been featured on a few different sort of high profile uh, blogs who've uh, been very supportive of it and have put links on there so that people can kind of find it and play it if they want to. Uh, so, a place like Hey You Guys, Badass Digest. Um, and another sort of random one called like GD Science, which is a sort of international. Uh, expat newspaper type thing. They just, they just got in touch out of the blue and said that they wanted to cover it. So, um, so that's basically uh, that's basically where it is now. It's 30% funded, 29% uh, well, funded, um, and I'm kind of plugging away at this type of thing uh, at the moment. Just, <coughs> to just get back and actually start rewriting the book because I'm getting bored of screaming at the internet about the book and I just want to actually write, continue writing it. Um, but that's kind of where it's up to now. Um, so I thought it'd be worth giving you a flavour of sort of the films that I'm talking about as well. So, um, so this will give you a bit of a, a brief three minute snapshot or whatever of the kinds of films that are covered in VHS, and eventually VHS and sort of the kind of films that I grew up uh, watching, which a lot of the time I probably shouldn't have been watching at that age, but uh, yeah. Send it well.